Algonquin Park is a paradise for nature lovers. Whether it's wildlife, wildflowers, or just being out in the wild of nature, Algonquin has so much to offer. The park is 7,653 square kilometers. Over 2,400 lakes and 1,200 kilometers of streams and rivers are located within the park. Algonquin is in an area of transition between the southern deciduous forest and the northern coniferous forest. There are bogs and wetlands similar to the more northern landscape and there are plenty of disturbed areas. This unique mixture of forest types and the wide variety of environments allows the park to support an uncommon diversity of plants and animal species. Because of the wide variety of different habitats in the park, Algonquin has a rich diversity in birds. There are two great books that are specifically on the birds of Algonquin. The highly detailed Birds of Algonquin Park by Ron Tozer includes every species recorded in the park from the most common species to the rarest of sightings. There is also a condensed official publication called Birds of Algonquin Provincial Park by Dan Strickland. This includes beautiful colored pictures of Algonquin's more common birds. The birds are nicely organized by the habitat they live in. We are going to use a similar format in this video by presenting different birds of Algonquin by the preferred habitat and where you will more likely encounter them. We will begin with the birds of the spruce bog. A spruce bog is a northern type of habitat that is common in the boreal forest. This habitat is a type of wetland with floating layer of peat resulting in an ascetic and low nutrient ecosystem. Some species have adapted to survive in these harsh conditions. Algonquin Park is the southern limit of a few species of birds and for this reason they are exciting sightings for many of the southern bird watchers. The Canada Jay is a boreal forest bird and there is a decent population in Algonquin. These birds have an incredibly thick fluffy plumage that puffs up in the cold winter. The Canada Jay is one of the few birds that will readily take handouts from your hands. Most of the Canada Jays in Algonquin have been banded and you'd be hard pressed to find one without their colorful leg jewelry. Another boreal species with Algonquin at its southern limit is the boreal chickadee. Like most chickadees, the boreal chickadee caches foods regularly. This activity is probably vital for their winter survival in the harsh boreal environment. Algonquin is also the southern limit for the spruce grouse. Males are brownish black with white dots and during the mating displays they have a distinct red eyebrow. Females are more brown, buff, and white. Spruce grouse mainly eat the needles of conifers, especially jack pine, white and black spruce, and sometimes tamarack. Grouse forage on the ground as well, eating growing tips, flowers, and the fruits of small plants. The spruce bog attracts a variety of warblers. The Nashville Warbler is one of those many warblers poorly named by Alexander Wilson. I prefer the French name which translates to the gray-cheeked warbler. In September, warblers can be seen eating abundant fruits and berries of the park. The distinctive black mask on the common yellow throat along with its distinctive call lends to the ease identification of this widespread warbler. Another bog warbler is a northern water thrush. They forage at the water's edge in bogs and still water, where they hunt for aquatic insects and small salamanders. Tiny birds that seem to be flowing with energy, the ruby-crowned and the golden-crowned kinglets, forage frantically through the lower branches of shrubs and trees. The beautiful cedar waxwing is always a treat to find. The silky feathered birds feed mainly on fruits year-round, and while many birds are fighting for territories, waxwings are friendly toward each other, often seen passing berries up and down the line as they perch on the branches. They seem to love each other's company, including enjoying bathing together. A few flycatcher species breed in the park, and the yellow-bellied flycatcher will be the one that you would find in the spruce bog, where they catch insects in midair and pluck them off the vegetation. Now swamp sparrows may look a little drab, but their song is a sweet accompaniment to the spring mornings in the boreal forest of the sedge swamps. 
The swamp sparrow has longer legs than the other members of the genus. This adaption allows them to wade in the shallow water to forage. Merlins are small yet powerful falcons who use surprise attacks to bring down small songbirds and shorebirds. American bitterns can be challenging to find because this secretive bird blends in so well in the reeds, especially when striking a concealment pose with their necks stretched out and their bills pointed skyward. When not standing motionless among the vegetation, they are patiently stalking fish, frogs, and insects. Much of Algonquin Park is covered in the coniferous forest. A variety of pine, spruce, fir, cedar, and hemlock all grow within the park. The blue-headed vireo is a vireo that you will see in the coniferous forest. Vireos are small, insect-eating birds of the treetops where they hunt along the live branches. The Cape May Warbler is another one of Mr. Wilson's poorly named warbler. He named it based on the area that he collected the species. After that, the Cape May Warbler was not recorded in Cape May for more than a hundred years. Again, I prefer the French name, translated as Tiger Warbler. These attractive warblers breed in the northern spruce fir forest, where its nesting success is tied to the chief food, the spruce budworm caterpillar. They have specially shaped tongues that allow them to sip nectar from flowers in the winter and during migration. Magnolia warblers nest in dense conifers such as spruce, balsam fir, and hemlock. They would never nest in a magnolia tree. The yellow rump warbler is the most abundant warbler in Algonquin. This is likely because they are perhaps the most versatile foragers of all warblers. The black and white warbler acts much like nuthatches or creepers. They creep along the tree trunks and branches, probing the bark for insects with their slightly down-curved bill. White-throated sparrows are famous for their delightful calls as they sing throughout the day. We have heard them singing late in the day, even long after sunset. These sparrows hop when they're on the ground, rather than walk or run. They forage in the leaf litter, using both feet at once to scratch backwards, and then pounce forward on anything they have uncovered. The chipping sparrow is a smaller sparrow that is easy to identify with its bright rufous cap. Chipping sparrows mainly eat a variety of grass seeds and herbs, but during the breeding season they'll also hunt for protein-rich insects as these form a large part of their summer diet. The purple finch is a year-round resident of Algonquin Park. They require evergreens for nesting, and they are tied to the coniferous forest of Algonquin. Purple finches eat mainly seeds of the coniferous trees. Another year-round resident of the park is the red-breasted nuthatch. They are common visitors of the bird feeders, and they will occasionally eat out your hand. In the summer, red-breasted nuthatches eat mainly insects and other anthropods, such as beetles, caterpillars, spiders, and ants. They raise their nestlings on these types of foods. In the fall and winter, they tend to eat conifer seeds, including seeds they cached earlier in the year. Brown thashers can be difficult to find as they are shy and hang out in the dense shrubbery. They typically feed on the ground, sweeping their bills through the leaf litter and soil with quick sideways motions. The Swanson thrush is another coniferous forest dweller, where they forage on the forest floor in the leaf litter, capturing insects and pulling out earthworms. Like the Swanson's thrush, the hermit thrush also lives in the coniferous forest, but they prefer higher and drier areas. In the spring, the hermit thrush eats mainly insects such as beetles, caterpillars, bees, and wasps, and they also occasionally eat small amphibians and reptiles. Northern Sawat Owl is always a very exciting sighting. It is a tiny owl with a cat-like face, oversized head, and bright yellow eyes. These fierce predators mainly eat small mammals like mice and voles. During migration, they may supplement their diets with small birds. The great gray owl spends the year in dense, wet, evergreen forest of the far north, where they hunt in meadows, bogs, and other areas with few scattered trees. With all these birds being such high supply, the bird-eating sharp shin hawk nests in Algonquin's coniferous forest as well. Using the cover of the evergreens, along with stealth and speed, they can attack their victims before they have a time to react.
Large portions of Algonquin Park is covered by hardwood forest with trees like sugar maple, yellow birch, and beech. These areas are used by a distinctive set of birds that thrive under the complete different conditions from the coniferous forest. The red-eyed vireo is one of the most common summer residents of the eastern forest. We nicknamed it the question bird because its tireless calls sound like it is continuously asking questions. Their olive green and white plumage, head patterned of gray, black, and white, and of course, the bright red eye makes them easy to identify. The difficulty is in locating them as they like to stay high in the tree canopy. Quite a few different warblers make the hardwood forest their summer home. The oven bird is a warbler that acts and looks much like a thrush. In thrush character, it spends most of its time foraging on the forest floor. They are elusive and will likely be heard more than sighted, as their call echoes through the woods during the spring and early summer. The black-throated green warbler is another common warbler. They eat almost exclusively insects during the breeding season, especially caterpillars, which they glean from the small branches on both coniferous and deciduous trees. We think that the male black-throated blue warbler is one of the most beautiful warblers with its midnight blue back, black face and throat, and pure white chest and belly. The black-throated blue warbler searches leaves and twigs for spiders, flies, and caterpillars, often taking them from the underside of vegetation in the mid-level of the forest. The black Bernian warbler is the only North American warbler that has an orange throat. It is no surprise that the French name can be translated to orange-throated warbler. They are seldom seen in the summer as they tend to dwell high in the forest canopy. American red starts act a lot like flycatchers as they prefer to catch their prey on the wing instead of picking them off the vegetation. They flash their colored patterns of their plumage to startle prey and flush them from the vegetation. The female builds a nest by herself in about three to seven days. The nest is a tightly woven cup of small fibers such as birch bark strips, twigs, grass, milkweed seed, lichens and mosses, hairs and feathers. Many flycatchers look similar and can be difficult to set apart, but the least flycatcher is one of the easier ones to identify because of its small size, bold white eye ring, and distinctive song. The eastern wood peewee dwells in the hardwood forest, but tends to forage higher in the trees than the least flycatcher, but lower than the great crested flycatcher. In the summer, the male scarlet tanager is an unmistakable bird with its deep red body set off by the black wings and tail. The rose-breasted grosbeaks breed in moist second-growth deciduous forest. During the breeding season, the rose-breasted grosbeaks eat a lot of insects as well as wild fruit and seeds. They mostly feed on berries during the fall migration. We have seen them foraging on wild grapes along the shorelines. Listen in the late spring and summer, particularly early in the morning or near dusk for the Viri's haunting, downward spiraling song emanating through the rich forest. Viri's breed in dense, damp, deciduous woods, often near rivers, streams, or swampy areas. Brown creepers are well camouflaged against the tree bark in the shade of the forest. They prefer forests with many large trees for foraging and loose bark dead trees for nesting. They glean, probe, and peck at the trunks with their long, down-curved bills. White-breasted nuthatches are agile birds that creep along the trunks and large branches, probing into the bark furrows with their straight, pointed bills. Like other nuthatches, they often turn sideways and upside down on vertical surfaces as they forage. The larger of the two look-alikes, the hairy woodpecker is a small but powerful bird that forages along the trunks and main branches of large trees. It wields a much longer bill than the downy woodpecker's almost thorn-like bill. Hairy and downy woodpeckers occur together throughout most of their ranges. The downy woodpecker uses smaller branches, while the hairy woodpecker tends to spend more time on the trunks.
Northern Flicker is a woodpecker that spends a lot of time on the ground. Flickers eat mainly ants and beetles, digging for them with their unusual slightly curved bill. The pileated woodpecker is a crow-sized giant of a woodpecker. They are quite vocal, typically making high, clear, series of piping calls that echo through the forest. They make impressive rectangular excavations that can be a foot or more long and go deep inside the wood. The primary food is carpenter ants, supplemented by other ants, wood-boring beetle larvae, termites, and other insects. They also eat wild fruits and nuts. The yellow-bellied sapsucker drills narrow circular holes into the tree's inner part of the trunk to feed on the sap moving up the branches in early spring. They lap up the leaking sap and any trapped insects with its specialized brush-type tongue. The ruby-throated hummingbird is eastern North America's only breeding hummingbird. They can sometimes be seen along Algonquin River edges in late summer, feeding on the cardinal flowers. Blue jays are a very common and well-known bird in Algonquin Park. These jays are known for their intelligence and their complex social system. They glean insects and take nuts and seeds, but they also store food in caches to eat later. They are very common in the campgrounds, especially in the winter. How many times have you been startled by a spooked ruffed grouse while walking quietly in the woods? When spotted ahead on the path, we see them nonchalantly walking to the woods. However, when we approach the area, they are nowhere to be found. They are true vanishing artists. In the winter, watch for ruffed grouse feeding on deciduous tree buds on the bare treetops. Many nights in Algonquin Park, we will hear the barred owl calling their signature call. This large owl with its big black eyes and brown and white striped plumage can pass completely unnoticed as it flies silently through the dense canopy. So well camouflaged we can walk right by them as they snooze on a tree limb. Beaver ponds and other small bodies of water are unique habitats for different flora and fauna. The American black duck is the most common waterfowl in Algonquin. Algonquin is the perfect location as they prefer freshwater wetlands including beaver ponds, brooks, bogs, shallow lakes and wooded swamps. The American black duck eats mostly plant matter with insects added during the breeding season. Mallards are becoming more common in the park, and they sometimes interbreed with the black duck. Since wood ducks thrive in temporary forest ponds, swamps with mature trees and marshes, they are right at home in Algonquin Park. Being the second most common duck shot in Ontario, it is nice that they have a safe haven like Algonquin. Like the wood duck, Hudermagansers nest in tree cavities near beaver ponds and swamps. They are underwater specialists who eat small fish, aquatic insects, crustacean amphibians, vegetation, and mollusks. Common goldeneye are occasionally seen in Algonquin, as well as the ring-necked duck. Canada geese population is increasing, and Algonquin is no exception. They arrive in the early spring before the larger lakes have melted and stay until late fall. Male red-winged blackbirds fiercely defend their territories during the breeding season, spending more than a quarter of their daylight hours in territory defense. He chases other males out of the territory and attacks nest predators, sometimes chasing away much larger animals. Like the previous boreal forest species, Algonquin is the southern limit of the black-backed woodpecker. In Algonquin, the black-backed woodpecker is attracted to newly flooded beaver ponds where dying trees are invaded by insects. 
These medium-sized woodpeckers eat mainly large larvae of wood-bearing beetles. Wilson snipes can be found in all types of wetland, marshy settings, including bogs, fens, swamps, wet meadows, and along rivers and ponds. They can be seen on muddy shorelines, probing for food with their flexible bills. Wilson snipes feed mainly on insect larvae, including flying insects as well as snails, crustaceans, and worms. Great blue herons eat nearly anything within striking distance, including fish, amphibians, reptiles, small mammals, insects, and other birds. They grab their prey with their strong mandibles or use their dagger-like bill to impale larger fish. Anything that moves and can be swallowed could be their next meal, including chipmunks. Over 2,400 lakes, 1,200 kilometers of streams and rivers are located within the park. And just about every lake has one or more pair of common loons. They are the icon bird of Algonquin. Most loons leave the park in early November, but they are back as soon as the ice is out of the lakes in late April. Ever wonder why you seldom see an adult male meganser in the summer? The male and females return to the park in late March, as soon as the water opens up. The males leave for James Bay about two months later, right after the mating season is over. The females stay and raise the young. If you see a seagull in Algonquin Park, chances are it will be a herring gull. They nest throughout the park, usually in small colonies on islands. Grand Lake at Acre has such a colony. A completely different fish-eating bird is the osprey. Osprey soar over shallow waters looking for fish to show themselves and then dive feet first grabbing the victim with their fierce talons. Double-crested cormorants are on the rise in Algonquin. On a recent canoe trip, we've seen a few small colonies in some of the larger lakes, and half a dozen or so here and there sunning themselves in the trees. Most aerial birds have been declining over the past few decades. Tree swallows and barn swallows were common in Algonquin some 20 years ago, but their numbers have dropped significantly. Eastern kingbirds nested and hunted at most of the beaver ponds back in the 80s. Now they are a rare sighting. Great crested flycatchers exploit a niche higher in the canopy to avoid direct competition for food with other flycatchers. Eastern Phoebes generally perch low in the trees or on fence lines. Phoebes are very active, making short flights to capture insects, very often returning to the same perch. They like to nest in buildings and under bridges. When paddling canoes under bridges, be careful not to disturb the nests in the spring. Roadsides and disturbed areas attract a variety of birds. And in this group, I will also include birds that thrive just about anywhere. Song sparrow melodies are a welcome sign of the turning of the seasons. Even after the warbler songs have faded out and the red-winged blackbirds become quiet, the song sparrow continues to sing well into the summer. This is because the song sparrow has to hold on to their nesting territories for two broods. The ever-friendly black-capped chickadee is a common sight in Algonquin Park campgrounds, especially in the winter. They will gladly take handouts from campers, including taking food from our hand. It is fun watching them make their little sorties to the bird feeders then off to a nearby branch to break open the seeds clutched tightly in their little feet. American goldfinch prefer old fields and shrubbery habitats. They are common summer residents of the park and sometimes stay through the winter as well depending on the winter seed crops. 
The American woodcock prefer areas that are disturbed or partly cleared. Since Algonquin is scarred by logging, the woodcock will take full advantage. And a warbler who is enjoying Algonquin's logging operation is the chestnut sided warbler. This species requires bushy, sunny clearings, so Algonquin is ideal conditions as these logging practices continue. Indigo buntings prefer disturbed, forest edge type areas, and Highway 60 makes ideal habitat. Although their presence can be unpredictable, some years they are numerous, other years they are very scarce. Common grackles can occupy a wide variety of habitat, and quite often flocks of them descend over the campgrounds looking for food scraps. They arrive in early March and can still be around in October. Ravens are a permanent residence of Algonquin. Common raisins are bold, playful, and clever, and they're almost always doing something worth watching. Turkey vultures did not become regular visitors to the park until the late 70s. Wild turkeys were reintroduced in Ontario in the 1980s. Eventually, they made their way to Algonquin and are now a common sighting. Although they are familiar town and city birds, American robins are at home in the wild areas too, including Algonquin's forest. Many migrants pass through Algonquin in the fall, often stopping to refuel during their journey. Rusty blackbirds feed on the exposed mud along the river's edges. They also exploit roadsides and other open areas. White-crowned sparrows breed in the Arctic, but are numerous during the September and October migration. They load up the abundance of the park's berries and seeds before continuing their way south. Horned larks normally migrate through the park from mid-September to early November during the fall migration. They occur in the open areas, roadside, fields, and parking lots. In spite of the name, American tree sparrow are ground birds. During the spring and fall migrations, they will search out weedy fields, hedge groves, open forests for foraging between the nights of flying. During migration, Lincoln sparrows stop over in the fields, forest edges, and other areas with thickets. Dark-eyed juncos use a variety of habitats, including open woodlands, fields, roadsides, and Algonquin campgrounds. American pipits nest in the Arctic tundra. During the spring and fall migration, pipits select similar open habitats including grassy areas, beaches, mud flaps, river beds, and shores along the lakes and rivers. The solitary sandpiper is a migrant in Algonquin Park. Spotted sandpiper and killdeer are occasionally seen on the sandy shores in Algonquin. They are both early migrators who usually leave the park before the end of summer. Algonquin winter can vary widely and each year the winter birds can be different. This would have a lot to do with the food supply. White winged and red crossbills have specialized bills to extract seeds from the cones of spruce, pine, douglas fir, hemlock and tamarack. Crossbills are nomadic and can occasionally have eruption winters in Algonquin. Crossbills often come to the ground to consume grit along the roadsides, which can be deadly for them with the high-speed cars and trucks that travel Highway 60. Red poles are a true northern bird, spending the summer in the high Arctic. 
common red poles move south irregularly in the winter following the patterns of food supply. Sometimes that supply is in Algonquin Park. Like the red poles, the pine siskins are nomadic finches with ranges that vary widely and erratically across the continent each winter in response to the seed crops. Some years they are abundant in the park, other years they could be absent. Pine grosbeaks live in the northern boreal forest, but they may drift down to Algonquin in the winter. Nearly 100% of their diet is made up of buds, seeds, fruits from other trees. In the winter, they will also eat grit and salt along the roadside. A heavy set finch of northern coniferous forest, the evening grosbeaks add a splash of color to the winter scenery when they are around as they tend to be irregular winter migrants. With their enormous bills, evening grosbeaks can crush seeds that are too large for the common red poles and pine siskins to open. This is just a few of the more common birds that spend their time in Algonquin Park. All in all, 278 bird species have been known to have occurred in Algonquin, and seeing some of these beautiful creatures will certainly enhance your visit. They, and many other flora and fauna species, rely on protected natural areas like the park and the continuing protection of these types of places is very important for their survival. <laughs>